Hello, this is a quick start guide to using Miro. The aim is to get you up and running as quickly as possible so you can contribute to a meeting or a workshop. This tutorial is based on the free plan, so whether you have this or the paid up plan, you'll be able to use all the features shown. And if you're a meeting organiser, you may want to include a link to this video in the meeting invite. So what is Miro? Simply put, it's an online collaborative whiteboarding tool. It has infinite canvas size and allows distributed teams to work together on a variety of tasks. I will use an existing Miro board and start with a brief overview before showing you some of the most useful features. Toolbars. There are four. Over on the left we have the collaboration toolbar. This is the toolbar you will use for creating and editing content. At the bottom left we have the presentation toolbar and this has a broad set of options that include presenting outputs and messaging participants. At the bottom right we have a navigation toolbar and this will help you find your way around the board and gets more useful as more content is added and the board gets bigger. Finally, at the top right is a settings toolbar which contains the settings menu and other collaboration tools. Navigating around the board. If you have a mouse you can click and drag the canvas to move around the board and use the scroll wheel to zoom in or out. If you have a touchpad, then you can scroll the board in any direction using two fingers and zoom by pinching in or out. For more information on these options, go to settings and select navigation mode. Sticky notes. A typical task in a whiteboard session is to add sticky notes and then group them. On the collaboration toolbar, you will see a sticky note icon. Select and you will have a range of coloured stickies to choose from. I'll select one and add to the board and give it a description. To create another of the same colour, simply drag the sticky directly from the toolbar to the board. And should you want to add several stickies to the board at the same time, there is a bolt mode option. Grouping and linking. With sticky notes created, we can put them in some kind of order by grouping them. First I need a couple of groups. So from the collaboration toolbar, I select the shape tool, pick something suitable and drag it to the board. I can now change this as I wish. Bigger or change the colour or add a description. I'll add another. This time I want the same size and shape, so I'll just drag the shape across and add a different description. I can now group the sticky notes by dragging them into position under the groups. To keep them tidy I can align with the blue crosshairs. To select multiple objects I hold down the shift key and select using the mouse or trackpad. I can now move the selection as a whole. With the sticky notes and shapes in the right position I can link them, perhaps to show dependencies. As I select an object notice the blue dots surrounding it. Click one of the dots and drag the mouse over to the object you want to link to. This creates a connection line. The formatting tool that opens as you do this can be used to change the line type or the colour or any of the other elements. Selection. Here is a quick explanation of the selection tool and how it works. It can be a little challenging at the start. Art. Look across to the collaboration toolbar and you will see the select arrow is blue. Select any object by one of the sticky notes and you can move it around the board. Now click on the select arrow again, it will change to black and when you return the cursor to the board it's changed to a hand. I can now shift the board around in a view only mode without changing anything. If I want to go back to selecting an object I have three options. I can change the select arrow back to blue, I can double click the object or I can use the keyboard spacebar to toggle select on or off. Undo. If you make a mistake or accidentally change something on the board, which is really easy to do, you can use the undo tool or control Z. Locating content. One of the challenges of using a whiteboard of an infinite size is locating the content. Fortunately, there are a number of ways to help with this. I've now moved to an area of the board where there are no objects visible. So where are the sticky notes we created earlier? If you look at the bottom right hand corner, we see the screen zoom size 
and I'll click on this and it automatically adjusts to 100%. That doesn't really help this time, but it does display the navigation toolbar. There is a pin map tool on this, and by selecting it, we get a representation of the whole whiteboard. Within the map, you'll see a black outline rectangle that represents our screen. You can drag this rectangle around to change the displayed content. Collaboration. When working in a team, it's useful at times to see where the other team members are, especially if someone is explaining a point, as it will provide some context. Go to the settings toolbar and you will see a collaborator's cursor tool. You can toggle this on or off to show or hide other collaborators. You can see collaborator B is on the board doing something now. Along the settings toolbar, you will see the initials of your collaborators. These are the grey filled circles with coloured outlines. If you want to follow someone, simply click on their circle. In this instance, I'm a collaborator A and I want to follow B, so I click on his or her circle and join them. We can now share the same view and B's circle changes to an eye on my board. If I want to stop following them, I can click back on the whiteboard and move the board around as before. Well, that's it for now. I hope that gets you started and please feel free to like the video if you found it useful and leave a comment if there's anything you'd like to see added or changed. Thank you for watching.